Today's case is on neuroradiology. A rare and potentially clinic clinically significant condition is a collard cyst of the third ventricle. The reason for showing this case is that often these cysts are quite small, but they can grow, and as they do, they have the potential to cause obstruction of CSF drainage of the foramen of Munro, causing acute obstructive hydrocephalus, potentially causing sudden collapse and death. Many people have CT imaging of their brains for unrelated reasons. For example, they may have fallen over and hit the head. A colloid cyst is a quick and easy diagnosis to make and can potentially save a life. On the screen, we have two CT brains, one done when a patient was 47 years old and the second on the left done when the patient was 50 years old, three years later. So starting on the earlier scan, we can immediately see that in the center of the screen, there is a unilocular, high density, well circumscribed ovoid lesion in the foramen of Munro. This is pathognomonic of a colloid cyst of the third ventricle. Now this cyst is quite small and it's important to look for complications arising, of the, arising from this colloid cyst. The, major, the main complication is obstruction. So we, our next job is to look for features of obstruction hydrocephalus that we can see on a non-contrast CT brain. We'll look at the size and the configuration of the lateral ventricles. Um, a quick and reliable way to assess this is to look for dilatation of the temporal horns of the lateral ventricles. So you can see that frontal horn, the lateral ventricles here, body, the trigone, the occipital horn is not dilated, and these are the temporal horns, and they are certainly not dilated. So we can be confident to say that there is no acute hydrocephalus. You can see that there are further paired high density structures in the lateral ventricles. These are calcified coronal plexi. These structures are there to produce CSF, and CSF then collects into the lateral ventricles and then drains into the third ventricle here via the foramen of Monroe, which are in close proximity to the third uh, the colloid cyst. So you can see how this cyst has potential to cause issues with, um, with CSF drainage in this region. We can also say that there is no evidence of transependomal edema because the region in the periventricular space right next to the ventricles are not low density. Going to the more recent study, you can see that the colloid cyst is still there and in fact has grown a little bit since the previous. Again, we look for complications arising from this. We look at the size of the lateral ventricles, going down to the temporal horns, we can see that it's not dilated, so there is no evidence of acute obstructive hydrocephalus. We can measure the size of the growth. 12 millimeters compared with the previous. Eight point five millimeters. We can say that there is growth, and then we can end the study by saying that there is no acute change. But you'd be doing the patient a disservice because that there is interval growth of the colloid cyst. It's uncertain as to how big this cyst can get until it will actually cause the patient symptoms. Even though there are no symptoms at this stage, no evidence of obstructive hydrocephalus, this cyst requires um, neurological, neurosurgical review as the cyst can get bigger at any stage and we'll never know when the patient may run into issues. The neurosurgeons can drain, aspirate the cyst, or resect it completely. Okay, so this is an art mini case. Um, there's not a lot of diagnosis, differential diagnosis that has this appearance. So you can be confident when you see this appearance to call it a collard cyst of the third ventricle. Thanks.